Thank you very much indeed, Lucy. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to take part in this uh, panel. Thank you very much indeed. I also would like to say it's uh, fabulous to uh, renew my acquaintanceship with uh, Helen and, uh, and uh, Dirk. We go, back a, we go back a long time. Uh, I'm going to focus on the significance of the court's uh, recent judgment in MHB against Hungary. It's significant for the rights and freedoms of media professionals and public interest campaigners when it comes to access to information held by officialdom. It is a significant judgment. Up to that point, the court had, arguably, taken the view that Article 10 covered only the freedom to receive and impart information and not the freedom to seek information. That was first postulated in the Leander v. Sweden judgment, which was confirmed in later judgments of the court. Although the court did not recognize in its MHB judgment a separate right of access to official information, it did clarify the Leander v. Sweden principles. And it, the court accepted that in certain circumstances, a right of access could be drawn from the right to freedom of, inf of expression. In its MHB judgment, it set out the criteria for determining in a particular case when an access right could arise under Article 10 and, if refused, whether that refusal would amount to an interference with the right to freedom of expression and thus fall to be justified from the standpoint of the requirements of lawfulness, legitimacy of aim and necessity as laid down in paragraph 2 of Article 10. What about the facts of the case? Well, the applicant, it's a non-governmental organization, and it wished to have access to police files concerning the appointment of police, or sorry, public, public defenders. The applicant was researching the manner in which the police selected public defenders with a view to demonstrating that the police largely rely on the same lawyers with the unfortunate consequence that lawyers become dependent on the assignments and are thus unlikely to challenge police investigations in order not to be overlooked for further appointments. Uh, two police departments refused to provide the information on the ground that the information was of a personal nature. Their view was upheld on appeal by the Hungarian Supreme Court with reference to the domestic data protection legislation, the Data Act. The applicant non-governmental organization brought proceedings in the Strasbourg Court saying that the refusal to allow it to have access to the information breached its rights under Article 10. For the benefit of the translators, I would like to say that I would now like to pass to point three of my speaking notes. Sir. What were the essence of the arguments before the court in the litigation? The Hungarian government, which was supported by the United Kingdom government, which had been granted leave to intervene in the proceedings before the court, invited the court to find that Article 10 could not be relied upon to ground a request to seek information. The intervening government, the United Kingdom, stated that the, if the court were to recognize a right of access to information held by the state, that would far exceed a legitimate interpretation of the convention and would effectively amount to judicial legislation. The Leander case law was, of course, in favor of the respondent government and in favor of the, the intervening government. Um, what about the applicant? The applicant essentially maintained that access to information was a sine qua non for the exercise of the right to freedom of expression. In the applicant organization's view, access to information was inherent in the right to freedom of expression, since refusing a request for access to data impeded the realization of that freedom. What about the intervening non-governmental organizations? The court had before it in the proceedings the written submissions of the Media Defense Initiative, the Campaign for Freedom of Information, Article 19, the Access to Information Program, and the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union. They basically submitted to the court that the wording of Article 10 expressly supported a conclusion that a right of access to information fell within the scope of Article 10, since the right to impart information and the right to receive information were two distinct rights. They also said that free speech was integral to the discovery of truth. An individual was unable to reach a view of truth 
if he or she could not have access to potentially relevant information held by the state. The third party intervenors also submitted that the court is not bound to follow its previous judgments, such as Leander v Sweden, but ought to interpret the convention as a living instrument in the light of present day conditions. Uh, they were basically the arguments before the, the court. Uh, what was the court's response to the party's arguments? Uh, as I noted that the, at the beginning of my statement, the court found for the applicant its complaint of a denial of access fell within the scope of Article 10 and there had been an interference with the right guaranteed by that article. What considerations led the court to find that there did exist a need to recognize an individual right of access to state-held information in order to assist the public in forming an opinion on matters of general interest? The court examined carefully whether a right of access could be gleaned from Article 10 in the circumstances of the applicant's case. It had particular regard to the development of the case law in this area over the years, the drafting history leading up to the, the adoption of the convention and, and in particular Article 10. It had regard to comparative and international law in the matter of freedom of information, including the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights and other EU provisions, as well as various Council of Europe instruments, including the Access to Official Documents Convention, which uh, Helen will speak about later. The court reasoned, and I quote, from the survey of the Convention Institution's case law, it transpires that there has been a perceptible evolution in favor of the recognition under certain conditions of a right to freedom of information as an inherent element of the freedom to receive and impart information enshrined in Article 10. Moreover, it is of paramount importance that according to the information available to the court, nearly all of the 31 member states of the Council of Europe surveyed have enacted FOI legislation. A further indicator of common ground in this context is the existence of the Convention on Access to Official Documents. As clearly illustrated by the court's case law and the rulings of other human rights bodies, to hold that the right of access to information may under no circumstances fall within the ambit of Article 10 would lead to situations where the freedom to receive and impart information is impaired in such a manner and to such a degree that it would strike at the very substance of freedom of expression. I underline, for the court in circumstances where access to information is instrumental for the exercise of the applicant's right to receive and impart information, its denial may constitute an interference with that right. What is the scope of the, of the right? The court considered that, the, that Article 10 does not confer on the individual a right of information, a right of access to information held by a public authority, nor obliges the government to impart such information to the individual. That's Leander. Leander is still alive in some respects. However, and this is important, such a right or obligation may arise in circumstances where access to the information is instrumental for the individual's exercise of his or her right to freedom of expression. In particular, the freedom to receive and impart information and where its denial constitutes an interference with that right. Whether and to what extent the denial of access to information constitutes an interference with an, with an applicant's freedom of expression rights must be assessed in each individual case and in the light of its particular circumstances. In other words, the court is not prevented from looking at an access to information complaint by the strict wording of Article 10. Whether or not there is an interference with the right of access will depend on the circumstances of a particular case. And the court led down guiding principles for determining whether a denial of a request for access to information held by public bodies amounts to an interference. The, the guiding principles are as follows. What is the purpose of the information request? Was it a relevant preparatory step in journal journalistic activities or other activities serving public interest goals? Was the request necessary for the exercise of freedom of expression? And what about the nature of the information sought? 
did the information relate to a matter of public interest? And the role of the applicant, what is the applicant's role? Does the person seeking access to the information in question do so with a view to informing the public in the capacity of a public watchdog? And was the information ready and available? Or would its disclosure prove particularly cumbersome for the authorities? Now, applying those guidelines or criteria, the court found that the failure to provide the information sought by the applicant NGO in this case constituted an interference with its rights protected by Article 10 of the Convention. It ruled that the information sought by the applicant from the relevant police departments was necessary for the completion of the survey on the functioning of the public defender scheme being conducted by it in its capacity as a non-governmental human rights organization and in order to contribute to discussion on an issue of obvious public interest. By denying it access to the requested information, which was ready and available, the domestic authorities impaired the applicant NGO's exercise of its freedom to receive and impart information in a manner striking at the very substance of its Article 10 rights. There had therefore been an interference. So there had been an interference that allowed the court to pass to the next stage under paragraph two of Article 10, had there been a breach of Article 10. And the, courts, uh, the court found on the basis of the necessity test as follows. It observed that the information sought was in the form of personal data, in other words, the names of public defenders and the number of times the police departments had given them assignments. Uh, the Hungarian Supreme Court had ruled that such data were not subject to disclosure under the data protection legislation and did not fall with any of the exceptions laid down in that legislation. However, the court concluded that that rigid approach excluded any meaningful analysis of the weight to be given to the applicant's Article 10 right. Although the information sought admittedly concerned personal data, it did not involve information which was outside the public domain. The information sought consisted only of information of a statistical nature about the number of times the individuals in question had been appointed to represent defendants in criminal proceedings. There was nothing to show that the privacy rights of the public defenders would have been negatively affected had the applicant's request been granted. Breach of Article 10. Lucy had also written some notes about the implications of the judgment for uh, the work of media professionals, but I think uh, to save time it might be better to leave that discussion for the, after the, after the panel, panelists have, uh, have spoken. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I should maybe point out at the end that the judgment was not unanimous. Uh, there is a, a powerful uh, dissent attached to the judgment, which was uh, uh, prepared by two of the judges of the, 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 the Grand Chamber. Thank you very much. Thank you.